We sure have been talking a lot about poop lately, haven't we? While I've done a couple of videos on the subject myself, the fact hasn't been lost on me that the Poo Chronicles have distracted Canadians from what's actually been creating this problem. Now, before we delve into that, let me just show you a video that made the rounds on Twitter, which perfectly demonstrates how high tensions have been rising between immigrants and born Canadians. It's a video that was posted as a joke, and one unscrupulous account edited out a key part of the video to completely mischaracterize characterize its creator, all for cheap likes and views. If you check out the comments being left by people who watched the edited version, it's clear that this unscrupulous account put the creator at serious risk, not to mention needless risk. That is not cool at all. Here's the full video for the record. Don't treat Canada like it's India. You want to act like that. Stay where you came from. No. I will stay here only. We are all coming and we are taking over. We will replace you all. We are going to work at the Tim Hortons and mess up your order on purpose only. We will marry your woman and shit on your beach. Nothing you can do will stop us. Nothing. Soon the takeover will be complete. Bro, I'm not even, I'm not even Indian. I'm not even Indian. The, the racism in the comments are crazy, bro. And now for the main event. The video you're about to watch was previously published, but I'm putting it back out there for a couple of reasons. The first being that I'm working on a video about the Century Initiative, which you might have heard of. The lobby group is about as nefarious as it gets. It's a consortium of 30 industry heads who have a plan to explode Canada's population to 100 million people by 2100. What's especially dangerous about this lobby is that Justin Trudeau pays very close attention to them and follows their directives like the obedient little lapdog he happens to be. And get this, the Century Initiative knows they're hurting Canada. If you follow them on Twitter, you'll see them openly talking about the unemployment they're causing and the inflation they're driving, but they just don't care. Those 30 members of the Century Initiative are wealthy and they live in homes the plebes can't get anywhere close to. So the result of what they do is not their problem. It'll always fall back on us. So while I work on that video about the Century Initiative, check this one out and be sure to check out the show notes for this episode as there will be a link to a video by Northern Perspective about the Century Initiative. Now, let's dig in. By now it appears as though liberals and the people who vote for them are the only ones who cannot understand how harmful mass immigration is to our economy. Now, one quick thing before we delve into this video, I've been teasing an announcement the past couple of days. This announcement has to do with the increasing levels of censorship that affect not just right-leaning channels, but even center-right channels. I'm currently building a workaround to that problem, and the best way for you to get notified of that workaround is to subscribe to this channel. Now, let's take a look at an affiliate lobby group trying to inflict more damage to our economy for their own personal gain. The lobby group we're talking about is the Canadian Immigration Lawyers Association, who will be referring to as SILA. SILA was founded in 2020 by immigration lawyers from across the country. I'm mentioning the date the organization was formed because if you look at this chart here, you'll clearly see why they have such a vested interest in lobbying. Take a good look at that spike in immigration levels. Notice how the rate of immigrants literally doubled within a year of the group's inception? You can bet a good deal of that increase has to do with the several meetings Sila has with Mark Miller each year. It's also worth reminding you that prior to his current role as a Liberal MP, Mark Miller was himself a lawyer. Now if Sila had their way, that dystopian vision of the future Christa Freeland painted to sell her capital gains tax would no doubt become a reality. Silas' proposals would effectively amputate what remains of the safeguards for an effective and beneficial immigration program. So what exactly are the proposals that would be so detrimental? First, they recommend that the government repeal a key rule concerning medical inadmissibility. Even before we hear what this proposed measure is, the fact that they have to do with health is already a bad sign. They want to eliminate legislation that considers foreign nationals ineligible if it's determined their health condition is likely to be a danger to public health and safety or may place excessive demand on health and social services. This means foreign nationals would no longer be disqualified from coming to Canada regardless of their medical condition. We are in the midst of a crippling healthcare crisis. We do not have enough medical personnel to take care of the existing population. 
We even have people with severe injuries sitting in emergency waiting rooms for hours. And here is Sila proposing that we remove a fail-safe that would protect what little there's left of our healthcare system. They also want to do away with financial qualification. If someone intending to immigrate to Canada lacks the required funds to do so, Sila wants to see to it that officers consider not only the applicant's family for funding, but also his or her entire social network. Our immigration program is already overwhelmed with fraud. This is the reason so many scammers coming in on the false pretense of being international students are working 60 hours a week instead of studying. It's already too easy for applicants to borrow money and park it in their bank accounts to meet the financial requirements. Now just imagine how insane our immigration levels would get if all an applicant needed was a letter from the local sports team they play for saying they'd act as a guarantor. It's just too easy. Now this next one is really going to boil your blood when you hear it. Because if it did come into play, not only would it saturate our infrastructure like all of Sila's other proposals, it would also remove all ethical standards we expect from Canadian. Here it is. Sila wants to lower penalties for misrepresentation. Anyone found guilty of falsifying information on their application faces a minimum five-year ban from reapplying. Sila wants that reduced to one year. What's worrisome is that Mark Miller has already demonstrated his openness to continually moving the goalposts further apart. At the time this video is being made, the Liberals still have 16 months left on their clock. That's enough time to enact policies which will have an irreparable effect on Canada. If you find this concerning, be sure to bring it to your MP's attention and tell them you want to see them do their part to block these measures proposed by Sila. Thank you very much for watching and please do consider subscribing.